Vettel, Verstappen, Ricardo, just some of the drivers that have gone through the Red Bull Academy and now us. Hi guys, Brown here and welcome to the second season of my F1 2019 career mode. And we've gone to Red Bull and a lot of driver transfers have happened. So we've got Weber replacing us at Toro Rosso, Bottas has left. Mercedes joined Alpha. Giovinazzi has replaced Bottas. Vettel has left Ferrari to join Alpha alongside Bottas, which is a great partnership for Alpha. Raikkonen has been let go, so he's effectively been retired, basically. And replacing Vettel is Max Verstappen at Ferrari, which is very feisty because that puts him alongside Charles Leclerc, which is going off in real life going to be a very fire driver lineup for them let's get into qualifying and as we wait poised for the start of what will hopefully be a thrilling qualifying why don't you tell us anthony davidson about the things you can do to really get the most out of a car in a session like this well you're largely limited by the park Ferme regulations of course back in the old days pre-2004 you'd work on both a qualifying setup and a race setup over practice and then swap them over after qualifying. So the race car was quite different at times to the qualifying car. Nowadays though, you have to find a compromise that works for both. There are a few things that you can still adjust during the session, such as the differential, the brake bias and the front wing angle, but that's about it. So it's more about optimizing what you do have and adapting your own style to suit the track conditions. So as we head into qualifying for the first time here in what effectively is 2020 you can see we've got a new helmet for the new car at Red Bull it's, it's a bit like Albon's helmet a little bit but some of the driver transfers we've got good ones like Bottas, Vettel, Vettel to Ferrari alongside Leclerc was mega but this um, Giovinazzi to Mercedes first time I saw that, the first time I saw that I was like what? and I thought about putting it in one of the videos and I was like that's kind of one of them so I decided to leave it out, I think it did at least um, so we're here in qualifying, we've set our lap, we've gone P8 but as you can see here we've gone down to P13 and I've completely mistimed it and we're going to get knocked out of Q1 Ah, what a shame, obviously we need a good result, it's our first race for Red Bull, let's get into it. Formula One, so going four winter months with no racing at all has seemed a very long time indeed. We're back though in Melbourne, home of the Australian Grand Prix since 1996. The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. Its combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners make it a tricky track when it comes to overtakes. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. As with all the drivers at this level, they have a lot of ambition. But Formula One's a daunting step up from any other series, so expectations are high right from the start. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Pierre Gasly and Giovinazzi, Magnussen, Faber, Perez and Devon Butler, Grosjean, Ricardo, Alexander Albon and Stroll, Bottas, Kubica, Brown and George Russell, Norris and Nico Hülkenberg completes the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So a very mixed bag for Alpha. They've put Vettel on pole and for some reason Bottas has taken engine panel and just puts him way down. Um... Not too sure on that, obviously. The AI do strange things on this year's game. And there's just a prime example of it again. So we're starting 18th. We're going to be going from the soft onto the mediums. And I put a bit more bit more fuel in the car. Sorry. Um, just so we can push a little bit more. 
Um, we're just adjusting what lap we picked here. We just need to get through the the pack as quickly as we can. We should have the pace advantage with the car. But here we go then to kick off 2020. It's lights out and away we go. It's Vettel v Hamilton into turn one. Or is it because Vettel is bolted at the start and Hamilton's left defending the two Ferraris I do believe it's Charles Leclerc who's trying to get past Lewis Hamilton here in the background we've gained about four or five positions I think from 18th as now we've got past Alex Albon and we're going to try and go all the way around the outside of Alex Albon we did that so many times at Toro Rosso and we're just going to continue to do it at Red Bull I hope actually I don't hope because that would mean we're near the back and that's somewhere I don't want to be. As skip as we go back to the lap, then, and we are hunting down Robert Kubica, and you can see here Sebastian Vettel back to his Red Bull days of bolting at the start. That's a good second and a half, maybe even two second gap. As Hamilton's left defending the two Ferraris, Gasly's trying to go around the outside of Giovinazzi. I can't get used to him in. A Mercedes, it looks so odd. As here comes Albon trying to overtake us to our inside. We're going to have to defend to the outside, and we do. Um, obviously, we had the battle last time out in um, Abu Dhabi, which is our last race for Tour Rosso with Albon. And he gave us a run for our money, and of course, we did come out on top in that one. If you haven't seen that, go check that out before you see this one. I kind of just pulled it for you, but. Oh well, <laughs> you're going to come back to this video and, and you're going to know what happens anyway. As down at the back, I can't really commentate on what's happening here. Factory Bottas coming under pressure from a racing point who's actually overtaken him. I do believe that's Perez. As Bottas is going to have to go the long way round and he does. The team McLarens were getting feisty in the background as well. There. And now we're going to skip on in just a sec. Here we are. We're right on the back of Robert Kubica and we're going to go to his inside into the second to last corner and we're going to do him and he's going to go wide and Albon is going to sail around his outside at the final corner and that has two positions dropped for Robert Kubica and now up next for us is Daniel Ricciardo home Grand Prix, home hero it's going to be hard to overtake him as we head down into turn four we've got a good run on him i'm going to go to his outside and we're going to go the long way around ricardo we're going to go all the way around the outside and we've got the job done there that is a mega move on danny rick you have to wake up pretty early to go around the outside of ricardo and we've woken up extremely early here to do that as up ahead we've caught the back of devon butler and you can see Lucas Weber in what effectively was our car is going wheel to wheel with Roman Grosjean they're side by side going into the final corner Butler's going to get a run here as, as Weber squeezes out Grosjean and now we're going to get a run on both of them and make it free abreast heading into turn one we've got the house of Grosjean we're side by side with Butler we've got Butler as well, or have we? No, we haven't. As now Butler defends to the outside, we're going to go down the inside. Butler's going to go the long way around. We're going to go right round the outside of Butler, off the track. Sparks flying as we go over the Sasha's curb, and we just about get ahead of Devon Butler there. That was well fought. Fair play, Butler. Take my hat off to you. That was an excellent battle. Gave us a run for our money. As here we go then, we've caught the back of Lucas Weber in our old car. <laughs> and now we're going to go to his outside, we're going to think about it there. We've gone a little bit wider, I was trying to go all the way around his outside, like we, a bit like we did to Ricardo, but I just got understeer with the turbulent air. So we're going to have to wait to, to turn one to really get a move going, I think. I'm still a little bit too far back, we're going to turn it up though to overtake and we should have DRS as well as we're closing in on the Toro Rosso and now we're practically pushing him through turns one and two and now we should get the move done heading into turn three I believe and yes 
We're on the outside. We're going to go the long way round. Copy and paste off Ricardo. And that is an excellent move on the German. As we head up there and into the pits, then come the top leaders. Top leaders, top, top four. As we've skipped on quite a few laps because not a lot really happened after I overtook Weber. Um, the top three kind of go, coming out the pits as they came in really. There's Sebastian Vettel. Hamilton follows him through and then so does Max Verstappen. As here we come then into the pits. You can see Weber's followed us in. Going to make our one and only stop. We've actually got a bit of damage to the front wing there. You can see on the nose cone. Um, not sure what happened there. It might have been... Maybe a little bit of contact with Lucas Weber. Weber's come out just behind us and up ahead of us now is Sergio Perez. And it's crucial that we beat this McLaren out though to catch Perez. And we haven't. It's Lando Norris. He's beat us out, I believe it is. Maybe Hulkenberg. I always got the McLarens mixed up last season. But I think that is. Lando Norris for now and um, we've got to get past him quickly but there isn't really an overtaking place here or is there we're gonna go to his outside and round the outside that's not an overtaking place but it is now no corner no track is hard to overtake on if you prepare to take the risk that's kind of the way I think about it. You might have seen Weber trying to get past the McLaren as well there. And now we're hunting after Sergio Perez. Or we was hunting after Sergio Perez. As he's had a massive engine failure there. Off he trots in the background and out of this Australian Grand Prix. Here's a replay of what happened. You can see he's been just going through. And it just goes back bang on him nothing he can do that's a massive engine failure um i'd say that engine is just a bag of bits not much of an engine left in the back of that as now we're pushing and pushing and pushing because up ahead is antonio Giovinazzi in the mercedes and we've caught the back of him this is the battle for p7 in this race which i think is six points or maybe eight not sure but anyway this is a big battle this is mercedes versus red bull it's mercedes power of course first honda power as we head through the final corner can we get past Giovinazzi here he's going to be quick in a straight line that Mercedes engine pulling him along but he's on the hard so he's going to be struggling for acceleration compared to us on the mediums and we're going to go round his outside at turn one job done but I think he's going to come back us up here heading into turn three he's going to go to our inside and now we're going to have to defend all the way around the outside and we've got the job done and we're safe from Giovinazzi now hopefully and now we can just pull away hopefully and get a couple more points in this race we've got through the field fairly quickly of course we've got to save time with Perez going out the race but Giovinazzi isn't done there because we make a massive mistake going into this penultimate corner we've had an awful exit and now Giovinazzi is going to fly past us. We've tried to squeeze him a bit. But we just haven't got the speed of that Mercedes after getting the poor run through the final couple of corners. We're going to have to get past him hopefully here into turn three. But we're not quite close enough. I probably could have gone for the lunge. But I don't really want to be that aggressive. I don't need to be that aggressive. It is only race one of 21 in the end. And there's a lot more points up for grabs. But here we come. We're going to try and go all the way around the outside here. That's not an overtaking place. But as I said earlier, no place. <laughs> it's hard to overtake if you're prepared to take the risk. And we've gone all the way around the outside of him. We're still side by side. And now it's a race to get to the right hand side of the track for the quick chicane. And we've sort of done 
uh, gents and butter now what he did in 2011 to I think it was Felipe Massa when he was still racing for Ferrari of course Jensen was in the McLaren then that's when it looked nice to McLaren in the Vodafone colours and the chrome that was McLaren at his peak in terms of livery design in my opinion but anyway back to the racing and can Antonio Giovinazzi re-overtake us I think we've got a healthy margin on him now as we skip on a couple of laps and here comes Giovinazzi to our inside it's going to be hard work defending him round the outside here but we've just about done it and now we just need to do it for the second right hander and we've done it but he's going to squeeze us into that left hander and he's squeezed into the apex and got past us that's well played Giovinazzi very tactical just to push us to our outside push us then to the inside and I've had to break harder and earlier than Giovinazzi to get round the penultimate corner but can we possibly re-overtake him into turn 3 I don't think we're quite close enough this time around and we're not so maybe into the second DRS as we head through here I don't think we're, we're nowhere near close enough to try go round the outside like we did last time we're nowhere near Giovinazzi, we need to probably be practically pushing him round the corners but that's not going to happen as we just kind of need to wait now, be patient, wait for him to make a mistake as we've got a good run on him, he's had a poor exit coming out of that corner and now we're going to pull to his outside and just like Jensen Button we go round the outside at the far chicane and past Giovinazzi but he's going to have to run on us here into this what is the third DRS but he's not quite close enough we park the car in the middle of the track and Giovinazzi can't get anywhere near us and now we can just get our head down and now hopefully keep Giovinazzi behind till the end you can see if you skip on a couple of laps the gap we've pulled out to Giovinazzi is mega now no mistakes like before as pulling off is Lucas Weber in the <laughs> in the Toro Rosso in our, in our old car has retired we only, ret we, we only retired once in the Toro Rosso all season and he's already retired once this season as we round the final corner and we're going to take P7 here in Australia do you know what it's the circumstances of the race obviously it's a poor result compared to what Red Bull want but it's the best we could have done what do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. So, Lewis Hamilton winning the race from Sebastian Vettel from Charles Leclerc, then Max Verstappen in the other Ferrari, then surprisingly Pierre Gasly, then us, oh and also Kevin Magnussen actually in between the Ferrari and Pierre Gasly, so that's a great result for Haas, and to be honest I'm not, that is the um, driver championship as well so not really any need to show the driver championship this episode so the constructors is looking like this Ferrari and um, Mercedes are top then Ferrari and Alpha then us then Renault Williams doing well 
but obviously not all of the teams have scored as it is only round one. Let's go and talk to Claire. Your former teammate had a rough time out there and wasn't able to finish. That's got to be frustrating for him. How do you think Lucas will find his new team? You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? You had a close battle today, didn't you? Appreciate your time. Not really too sure why Claire's asking us questions about her former teammate after kind of the great comeback drive from 18th to 7th that we did in that race. Obviously that was kind of the best we could have got in my opinion. Um, we got a decent amount of R&D points and to be honest I'm not I'm not a quick round Australia as you've, you've just seen by that race. We had decent his pace. If you want to read the transcript you're welcome to pause them, read them. I'm just going to be skipping through them quickly. Um, but the race it was good. Um, on to the R&D. So Red Bull, this is what they've done. I haven't touched the R&D yet up to this point. And so they've done a lot. They didn't do a lot on the aero side, which has helped them. Which hasn't helped them, of course. The aero was what the regulation has changed. So they haven't decided to save some of the parts. I'm guessing there. And um, we're going to do an update on the engine, because you can see we're very, very down on power with that Honda engine, you can see where we've put the Toro Rosso engine and now ours so we're going to do that but that's pretty much this video um, I hope you enjoyed it hit the like button subscribe if you like this kind of content and especially hit the like button to kick off what hopefully is another great season of this F1 2019 career mode now season number two i really hope you you've enjoyed this episode and will continue to watch these episodes every wednesday and sunday hopefully that's what i'm going to try and upload i'm going to try and be consistent with those two try and get it fitted in with my college as well um but if you're excited for this new season smash the like button subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video but until round two in Bahrain enjoy the highlights goodbye <laughs>